in the in the actual Hebrew language is Ibar Yah. Now you notice that this is the uh, 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 Aramaic form. It's Ibar Yah. That's Hebrew, which comes from the word the Hebrew word Ibar. Okay, this is where you get the name Eber from. All right, and the reason why Eber was named that was because he was the the uh, the uh, patriarch whom the language was kept through. Because when you go back to the beginning, Genesis, the 11th chapter, and I'll start at the first verse, and the whole earth was of one language and of one speech, meaning everybody spoke that same language, you know? So everybody before the flood spoke the same language. That's why they were able to understand each other, you know, to be able to uh, build this tower and be able to be in unison as one. Now, that was your first new world order. Everybody was speaking the same language. Everybody understood everybody. Everybody had the same goal in mind was to build this, this, uh, this tower so that the flood wouldn't overtake them again. Now, if the Most High was with all people coming together, why did he not allow these people to, to continue speak, uh, speaking the same language altogether? Why did he confound the language? Because the Most High is not dealing with all people coming together like that. All right? It says, uh, I'm going to jump to the fifth verse. And the Lord came down to see the city and tower, which his children of men build it. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one. And they have all one language. And this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language, that they may not understand uh, one another's speech. So then when that happened, that's where all the different languages came into being, off, uh, based off of the Hebrew language. And if you look at all these languages, they all have some, some form of Hebrew root to them, all right? One of the closest being uh, uh, Arabic, which, which, it, which has a, a, a Hebrew in it because it's a mixture of Hebrew in there. It says, so the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore, is the name of it called Babel. Now, the word Babel comes from the Hebrew word babal, which means confusion. And it was called that because there was all these different languages speaking, you know, and they, and no one understood each other. And that's the reason why the Lord calls America Babylon the Great, because it's that great melting pot with all different languages, you know, on there. You know, they have a term called e pluribus unum, which uh, let me grab that real quick. Let me go to all. Let me see. E pluribus unum. It says e pluribus unum, out of many, one. And it says what? The model of the U.S. All right. So pluribus is where you get the word plural. Unum is where you get the word one. And e is, no, I guess it's a shortened form of out of many. Okay, I'm sorry, out, out of, you know, out of. So e pluribus unum, out of many, one. And that's the model of the U.S., okay? So you have all these different people that have different backgrounds, different religions, different languages that are all here gathered together in what's known as the melting pot. And that's another term. Let's put in the term melting pot. Let's see what comes up. Uh, Melting pot. Let's see. The melting pot is a metaphor for a het heterogeneous society becoming more homogeneous. So in other words, heterogeneous, the word hetero means other, and genius is where you get the word gene. So this is a, 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 a society that has people of different races, right, becoming homogeneous or one nation. The different elements melting together into a harmonious whole with uh, a common culture or vice versa for a homogeneous society becoming more heterogeneous. So pretty much the Lord doesn't want this. The Lord does not want. And if you look at the picture, it says the melting pot, the great American drama. So this is when you t look at or uh, think of the term melting pot is always is, is uh, normally associated with. America. All right. 
and that's what you that's what you got the melting pot and there was and all nations were supposed to come here that's why they had what's known as ellis island which is uh where the uh, statue of liberty is where all these different nations would come to and register themselves there all right before they actually came on the soil on the actual soils of america you know that was the first place that they would go to to uh, uh um you know document themselves so to speak okay um it says um through the influx of four foreign elements with different cultural backgrounds with the potential creation of disharmony with the previous culture historically it is often used to describe the assimilation of immigrants to the united states see so this is this is why america is known as babylon the great but when you go back to the beginning matter of fact before i read that before i read that all right let me go here to the book of revelation 17 and i started one and there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me saying unto me come hither i will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters so this great whore is america why because everyone on the planet you know wants to do and be like america because they want to get that money they want to make that money and they want to be like you know america so this is the great whore and it says that sitteth upon many waters now what are these many waters that it's sitting upon well let's jump down to the 15th verse and um there was another precept that okay just bear with me one second it's another precept popped in my head uh, through the spirit all right um it says here and and he saith unto me the waters which thou sawest where the horse sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues so this is that great melting pot now there's another scripture in i believe it's the book of ezekiel that kind of is similar to this but I, offhand i don't know how it's quoted you know but uh, it kind of goes into the waters and the peoples and all that all right so this is what this is what we this is where we get that term e pluribus unum from or the great melting pot you know which is america and you also they're also sitting not just upon all the people here but also upon the children of israel as it states here in isaiah chapter 14 and uh verse 13 for thou hast said in thine heart i will ascend into heaven i will exalt my throne above the stars of the most high i will sit also upon the mount of the congregation and the sides of the north and this is another clue that america is this babylon the great because this is north america and this is where the the uh the international bankers as well as the the ruling class um have jake in uh, uh pretty much in slavery under contracts and the spirit has had us going through that for the last few days dealing with this 14th amendment uh slavery you know and and that's what's what what's what's binding jake to be slaves in this society you know and that's the reason why we can't escape because the lord said that no man shall save thee so they took the chains off of us physically but they put them on us mentally and they cemented it with these contracts and with our signatures you know and the labor that we that we that we give them is what what uh what keeps us perpetually in debt you know uh receiving the the uh the so-called monetary uh, uh ways or the monetary uh, funds that they give us which is uh these frn notes which are nothing but credit-based notes so you can never pay off a credit with a credit that's why when you get credit cards and you try to pay off credit cards with other credit cards what happens you know you you may pay off one but you're always in debt because you're chasing one you're chasing this thing over and over again and the scripture said that we would be subject to payments so there's no way to break that cycle unless you pay with actual money and that's what that's why on the back of the dollar bill if you look at the back of the dollar bill uh dollar bill you look in the back of the dollar bill let me see if they have one here right here Let's see if they if you look at the back of the dollar bill they have all these different webs 
And what happens when you get caught up in the web? You get tangled in and you can't get out of it. You know? And that's what happens. Now, if you look on this, uh, you can't really see it that great here. But if you look in that, right on, on this one right here, on this little uh, curvature here. Let me see if I can make that a little bigger. Uh, let me move it over. That's uh, two, three, four. If you look real good, I mean, this one, you can't really see it that great. I believe it's here in this corner where they have an actual owl, all right? Because this is the illuminated one's way of, of saying that that this is, this is their shit, you know, this is their deal, all right? And this thing will trap you up because it's, uh, oh, matter of fact, bring this back down. Um, let me go to Proverbs. two and seven it says the rich ruleth over the poor and the borrower is servant to the lender so that's the reason why we're in 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 this state because we're the the servants that uh that are we're servants to the ones that lend you know they're the ones that that give us this uh, uh debt bearing uh notes you know which is which is uh the scriptures call a false balance you know and that's why one that one of the reasons why the Lord is going to destroy them you know, it also speaks of the, about them uh, um, using our wages, you know, without really paying us. You know, and that's one that's another reason why we're out there on the highways and the byways cursing these devils out because they have not paid us for, you know, the uh, the labor that that our forefathers uh, put here, uh, not just in America. You know, dealing with with uh, Jake, Judah, Benjamin, Levi. Uh, you have uh, Gad, Reuben, Issachar. Then you have the islands, man. So they've never paid us for all that work they, they made us uh, to do. And that's the reason why the Most High is going to destroy these devils. All right? So um, going back to the melting pot thing. All right? So that's the congregation of, congregation of the north. The, so these waters on which the horse, this is another clue that this whore is America. And he saith unto me, the waters which thou sawest, which the, where the horse sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Now, when you go back to the beginning, which we read in Genesis 11 chapter, the Lord confounded the language there because he didn't want all people to come together. And he further went in Deuteronomy 32 and 8, when the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel because there was the Lord did not want all nations to come together. That's why he said he separated the sons of Adam. Okay. So now what he separated them, he gave them their lands, he gave them their portions of land. But then what was what made the separation even greater and what made the people of Israel stand out even more was the fact that he gave us the law, statutes, and commandments to separate us from uh, fully from these other nations. Because it says that the, the gods of these nations are, are, are idols. No, but the Most High himself is not. Okay, the Most High himself, he is a, a power of knowledge. And he gave us law, statutes, and commandments to set us apart from these other nations. That's why it says when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. For the Lord's portion is his people, possessive, Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. Why? Because he made a promise to Abraham that in him and in his seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So this is where the lot ended. That's why the fathers of the promise are known as Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All right? So now going back to uh, Genesis, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the 10th chapter. Let 